sit rep. It's the next day and I've done all the work I can do on here apart from removing this lower bush. There is still a ball joint in there. I'll explain that in a minute. I've now done the other side. I've removed everything from the other side that needs removing, except that bush again, and the track rod end. But the, the thing I'm gonna do now is try and knock up these spaces for the uh, wishbone to get it to sit at the right angle. I've got Hold that thought. I'm not gonna make the spaces yet because this is the bush that is meant to go in here. And it looks way too big. The problem is there's no, not really knowing what the tolerances are. 50 mil, 45 mil. I'm not entirely sure that that's the right bush. Well, this is the only bush you can get. You can't get a different bush. It's the only part number they do for this. And it's the only part number they do for a 407, which is what this is off of, I suspect, or a C5 steel sprung. Uh, I think what I might do is boil some water would be the first thing to do and pop this and the other one in it and get my heat gun to keep things warm and get some fairy liquid and chamfer the inside of this very slightly and maybe a tiny bit more on the outside of that <sighs> and then um, see if it actually goes in because I'm not 100% convinced it will. I don't actually have a lathe but the other option is to use the pillar drill as a lathe. So I make up some kind of bolt mechanism that would bolt to this, go through it and put that bolt in the pillar drill, spin it around and then, I don't know, use a scalpel or a pen knife blade or a file or something while it's spinning and try and take four and a half mil off of that bit. Not ideal, but these are rock hard at the moment. They need softening up. Update. I have the bushes in boiling water. Um, the housing, I've filed down the edge and rubbed it down. So normally it would be a sharp edge like that. But I've given it a little bit of a a radius there just to help it not rip the bush to pieces when I push it through. I'm going to try and push the bushes in as they are. It's possible that it does compress it that much. It doesn't, it seems a long way to go to me, but I'm going to try and put it in as, as they are. If it doesn't work, if it's just not having it, then I'll resort to trying to trim the bushes down. But I've got to try it this way around first, because if that is right and I go trimming them down, I ruin them. I've got a feeling that the C6, certain brands of C6 um, have different, uh, sorry, certain brands of aftermarket wishbone and perhaps the genuine ones have different bore size bushes because that's aftermarket, that might be smaller. I, I don't know for sure, but I'm gonna try that. So I've got some washing up liquid. The bushes are getting hot at the moment. Um, I don't think it's going to be a case of just sticking it in a vice and winding it up. I think it's going to need a stud, studs and washers and things because it's, um, yeah, it's going to need levering in. Oh, this is going to be horrible. Why do I do this again? So I've made myself a little uh, pressing tool as well. A bit of stud, loads of washers, found this big thing on the end. That will cup the back of the bush to stop it falling apart and then on the other end I mean yeah I've got more washers and nuts and all sorts so we should be on our way the bush will go through here get pressed on from here washers on this side and it should pull the bush in I don't think it will I think it will uh, complain so I'm going to try and start it slightly off center hopefully it starts to pull one side in and if I see any hint that it looks like it's going to start getting damaged I have to back off not convinced at the moment it has to be said is it actually going in 
No. No, I don't think so. Let's back it off a sec. Even been in the boiling water for as long as it has. Which would have softened it up, it's still... Nah, it's just too big. Bugger! Right, I better get the other one out of the hot water because I don't want it to be soft anymore. This contraption might help me to turn the pillar drill into a makeshift lathe. If there's any run out, we're in trouble. I haven't got a lathe, and if I did, I probably wouldn't know how to use it. So, I'm hoping... Oh, that's annoying. The shaft's wobbled. The, it, the shaft, the stud. It's warped, bent. Design Mark II. I've just gone for sticking a single one on here at the moment, and now it's on a bolt, which is brand new. So hopefully, no issues with uh, things being bent. That's not bad. I can live with that. Right, I need to make a blade. I've no idea if this will work. Sharp. And then what I'm thinking, place it in the jaws of that like so. Where's my very nearly calipers? So the size of the bush that came out, this is the remains of one of them, is 44.7 mil. To be precise, the ID of this hole should be the same. It might even be slightly smaller. It is very slightly smaller, 44.4 mil. Now I can't make that to that tolerance because on a soft, squishy bush like that, that'll be too loose. But at the moment, this is 50.3 so 44.7 i will try taking it down i think to 40 should we try 48 i'll try 48 first i'm about to wreck a bush uh. It's not quite high enough. Come on. Right, so here's the plan. It might. Yeah, it's going in a bit easier actually. Oh yeah, straighten. Look at that, no drama at all. What was I moaning about? So to save messing about, unless I can push it in by hand. Which... Ugh, nope, I'm gonna go and push it in with the press. <sighs> that was a nightmare. It's a tight fit. Right, so I haven't got any aluminium. So I've decided to get this big girt piece of plate and I'm just going to cut a strip off the bottom and make um, make my spaces there. But I'm hoping to drill it before I've cut it because that'll make it much easier to drill. So what I need to do is work out where all the holes need to be. And the easiest way to do that, I reckon, is I'll put a load of tape on there to make it soft. I'm hoping it will make sense, don't worry. At the moment it looks like I'm going mad, but although I don't have enough hands. Right, I'm hoping Yeah, kind of. Enough to draw around. That's one, so I need two of them. Right, well the battery's about to die on the camera, so I'm going to draw these and cut these out because there's not really much to show and charge the camera up. Right, wishbone bushes are in. 
bloody nightmare that was. And I've made spacers. So this is what I've made. I've taken these off of the, uh, off of that bar, well, not even bar, that flat plate. And basically one will go there like that. If I put it upside down, you'll see this one's slightly oversized, but I'm not gonna faff about cutting that for the sake of looks, because that's all it would be for. So basically it will raise it like that, only the other way around. And uh, this will then move the center point of this bush up. I know it looks down here, but it's up because it'll be the other way around which will change the axis of the uh, wishbone, which might stop the prattin' around. Um, if it's, Basically, it's got the wrong wishbones. But as I say, I reckon it's a good portion of them that probably do. I've made an executive decision. It's a decision which people will probably go, oh, for God's sake, why? Hear me out. This year is the uh, upper ball joint. So the knuckle goes in here. This is the upright. It pivots on this ball joint here and on that, uh, well, duck's foot, people call them, uh, F-R-I-P, I think, a bearing. Basically, it's a swivel bearing at the bottom. The problem I have is getting this off is not going to happen. Um, I've already beaten the side of it off around here. I've tried to get it to undo. I've made it hot. And it also turns out that the tool, which I should go and get actually, hold on. So if you've been watching the uh, long drawn out saga that are the Cecily videos, you recognize this tool, yes? Remember that? Well, oh. Right tool, wrong size. This is a bigger ball joint, beefier. Makes sense, this thing weighs nearly two tons. So, that's no good which means I don't have a tool. I've tried to chisel it. I've tried to persuade it. I'm not gonna grab it with Stilson's or anything like that because I'm gonna break it if I do that. But yesterday, when I removed the knuckle, this had a bit of play in it that way and was stiff this way. And I thought, right, so that's a sign that that's knackered. I ended up making it really hot to try and get it undone. And I was beating it and hitting it and trying to persuade it and then gave up and went home. Come back in this morning, it's smooth <laughs> and it's got no lumps in it or anything and it's not loose. It's actually all right. All it does is um, oh, rotate like that. That's all it really does. It doesn't really do much of this. It'll do a tiny bit, but so, with that in mind, I've obviously mullered the uh, boot that came off it. And I think this is actually a, this is probably a Febby one anyway. But that's the boot that, the gator that came off it. Sorry, it's gone dark, so. There's the gator that came off. And it was, it had a split in it anyway, so it would have failed the MOT. But what I'm actually thinking of doing, bearing in mind these ball joints didn't cost me a hell of a lot of money. I think they're about eight pounds something each. I'm going to nick the boot from the other one and just fit it onto that after cleaning that taper there and putting some grease on it. Because there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm gonna waste a lot of time trying to get that out and potentially damaging this whole upright, which I don't wanna do. So there was no play in it before. There was no knocks, there was no rattles. It's, I mean, I wouldn't, if it was easy, I'd just change it as a matter of course, but it's not easy. It's gonna be an absolute ball ache, but I don't think it needs it. So for that reason, I'm going to leave that. However, down here, which is a little bit further down from that, is the lower pivot barrier, uh, bleh, lo lower pivot bush. Easy for me to say. Um, that I am going to change because, although there isn't any play in that one, that one has got some cracking in it. It looks like it's starting to get a bit old. The one on the other side actually looks even better. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna change that because I've already taken a whole lot apart. I've taken this joint off here. I may as well. Again, not big money unless you buy them from Citroen. Because if you buy them from Citroen, they won't sell you that. They want to sell you the whole upright for four hundred quid or whatever. Um, Eight pounds something I paid for the bushes there. In fact, 
Here is one. Part number, well, this is for the Febby brand, 44400. It says it cross-references from 365604, which is the Peugeot Citroen number. 365604 is the part number for the entire upright. Look, the one they use now, anyway. It was originally 966154780. Off the top of my head, that was, honestly. So, yeah, that's going to go in there. Now, that doesn't look like a lot of fun to get out, does it? Don't worry about that. Because I have bought that special tool. And here is the extraction setup. Set get my words all mixed up here. And basically, all you do is you post, I might even be able to do it right now in one hit with no editing. That'd be dangerous, wouldn't it? That goes on there, that goes on there, and basically it's pulling it through. It's, that has got grabbed hold of the bush, but this is grabbing hold of the, of the upright. And then you wind, I have already oiled this. Um, I need, Where's that gone? I had a spanner somewhere. One take, one take. And then in theory, it's, uh, it should bite in a minute, there we go. Right. Hopefully, yep, I think it's going. Look at that. I shall now speed up the footage. Jurassic Park. And because this is uh, aluminium, it would be rude not to make it look a bit prettier. That'll do. The old bush, like you can see. I so I mean, there's no play in it, but it wasn't going to be far away, was it? So I don't think that was a bad thing to do. So here's the new bush. So in theory, this is just a case of persuading it in with this. It says, just clean the bore out, which I did. It said, do not oil the bush, don't grease it. Just wind it in. By having this done and having this new ball joint at the bottom here, it, they chew through these. These are I've, I've researched. They do eat these bearings, but the upper one isn't a common thing to change. And the few people who have done it have had great difficulty. I don't want to be one of those people and it'll just at some point it will just go tight like that there we go right that bush is in further than the old one was I can tell you that for a fact on both sides so the old ones weren't even fitted properly they must have done it with just some studding and some sockets or something or it tried to walk back out maybe much better. There was a gap behind that flange before with the old bushes. Right, that's the result. I'm going to go and do the other side now. The next job on our seemingly never ending to do list on the C6 is to push out this wishbone bush. Obviously, I need to cut off the remains of the old one here, and then the poly bush should simply slide on. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to push uh, this bush out um, and then potentially fit the other one. Um, the replacements are these poly bushes here, which should go in a damn sight easier than the other ones did. Be hilarious if I got them around the wrong way, wouldn't it? And I'll just wreck those bushes for no reason. Don't worry, I haven't. I'm fine. So yeah, I'm going to push them out in the press. You can tell the wishbones have been sat at an angle it's not happy with because these bushes have actually kind of like worn at an angle. They kind of 
and they're skewed over that would make sense because the subframe expects the wishbone to be sitting at that angle again not flat so right let's get that out right so i'm thinking that will fit yep that's oh, i did actually find that bit earlier so but then i need something to push on this side let's try that how many tons is it going to need can you see mm, that's one at the moment i think it peaked at just under two there we go it's gone already A bit stuck. One bush. Hmm. That can go in the bin. Now, I'm, hopefully, I shouldn't need the press for uh, the poly bush because they're normally much easier to fit. I'm hoping like the vice might work for that. There you go. I've cleaned up the uh, surface and my cheap aftermarket Peugeot 407 wishbone and that is lovely that's so smooth so basically when i've done this i'll have an uprated bush here an uprated bush at the back and the geometry of the wishbone would have been changed to that of a c6 i don't know why i pointed to the back because that is not the back that's where the upright goes that's the back there so to fit the uh, poly bush it looks like it's going to be quite a tight one again i mean it probably will go in without too much grief you have to take the tube out of it first but it says to file a small chamfer into this. That's going to take me quite a while because that is a, not an alloy wishbone um, and I'm running low on time. So I think that's going to have to be a job for the next time. So I shall pop that up there and that can wait for it. Um, but that's that's straightforward. I'm happy with that. I'll go and do the other side as well. I'll get the other, the other wishbone cleared. All right, one bush, two bush. So my remaining jobs are to fit the poly bushes into this, which is the front mount of the rear of the front wishbone, to remove this sleeve as remains of the bush that used to be at the back of this. I need to get rid of that because the new poly bush pushes straight onto the arm, um, which is the same design as the Saxo has, um, weirdly. So and that seems to work quite well. So yeah, that'll be the job for there. Then I've got to do the wishbone, uh, the uh, wheel bearing. Sorry, I've um, and I've got to tidy up because this is a nightmare. Um, here's the remains of the old ABS sensor. The uh, the circlip will need removing, and then the hub flange gets pressed out of the inside of the bearing, and then the bearing gets pressed out from the upright or from the knuckle. So I'll change that bearing. Uh, hopefully that circlip isn't seized in there. I've cleaned all this with a wire brush. Uh, this has to be right as well because the uh, speedo probably works off these so once i've got that wheel bearing done and these bushes done i can start rebuilding the driver's side only the driver's side you say what's wrong with the passenger side that's still got the knuckle on it i don't need to i need to put the light on there we go there's uh, yeah this is all much more already built than the other side what's the problem Mm, yeah, I noticed another problem. There's an ongoing thing. Uh, so yeah, I will put the wishbone back in and drive shaft and everything like that. But before I do, not having the drive shaft in there and the wishbone has afforded me some access. Access to what, you might say? That. That shadow. Yeah. This rusty pipe, um, that is a coolant pipe and it's a well-known weakness in the C6. Uh, it was basically the first thing that goes in the engine bay before anything else goes in there. So it's a bit of a, oh, there's a fox absolutely going for it outside. Yeah, it goes in the engine bay pretty much before anything else goes in there, which is inconvenient. And it rusts there, only there. If I hold the camera in the right place, that's the place it rusts. Now, it's going to be a lot easier to get to that with no drive shaft, no wishbone in the way. So, although it's nothing to do with the job I'm doing, that looks a little bit sad and I think it needs changing. 
well, it's not getting changed because a new one is hundreds of pounds. Um, but it will be, uh, I will remove the metal part of that, hopefully, and probably just replace that section there with a bit of flexi silicon. Because I mean, I can't see why you wouldn't just run a flexi hose there. As long as it tucks up out the way, I can, you know, we'll have a play, see what I can come up with. But uh, yeah, that needs sorting, unfortunately. And I think I'm gonna have to do that before I put the wishbone in. Because if that goes, you don't get a lot of, uh, it's on the heater circuit, so it's a circuit that's always got coolant in it. Even if the thermostat's shut, it will still need it straight away. Um, and if you get a leak there, you will empty your coolant system pretty quick. And then that leads to bigger problems, problems that I do not want. So I'm gonna have to do that, which is an absolute bummer, but it's better than the alternative. Look at all that green moss. All these hoses, pipes, look at these. Wonder what they are. Boost goes through those. But why does boost go round there? What, because it's twin turbo? Surely the boost pipes would go over the top of the engine. They do, they do. Those are boost pipes for the engine mounts. Yes, boost pipes for the engine mounts. It has active engine mounts. The more boost going through there, the stiffer the engine mounts get to stop the engine writhing about in the engine bay. Active engine mounts. Does your car have active engine mounts? I bet it doesn't. I repeat, active engine mounts. I have nothing else to say. So that about wraps things up uh, for now. Um, I'm not gonna change the upper ball joint, as I said, but I am going to harvest from this one the gator and the lock nut. And then I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed that it, it lasts a good while longer. As I say, it doesn't do, it doesn't do an awful lot, to be honest. But uh, they probably had to put a ball joint there because if you put a bearing at the top and the bottom, it would probably, you know, there's too much movement. It would just kill them. So that's all fine. So that's going to be reused. This has been replaced. The wishbone bushes will be done and they will be replaced. The drive shaft is new. That's down there on the floor. So basically it will be sort that out. Refit the wishbone. Oh no, a steering rack gate needs doing. So do that. Refit the wishbone with the shims and the new bushes. Drive shaft goes in afterwards. You have to put the wishbone on first because the bolts to get to it are on the top underneath the drive shaft. So wishbone on, then the drive shaft in. Wheel bearing will have been done. Upright can go back, or knuckle, sorry, can go back in then. Uh, onto there and onto there. New bearings, duck's foot, whatever, go there. Um, track rod end, new one, that can go in. Height sensor and everything back on. Clean up the brakes, maybe even a, a quick splash of paint. We'll see how we go. Um, clean up the hub flange, new disc, put the caliper back on, new pads, hook everything back up, arch liner, bit of under seal because it's just to stop that little bit of just a tiny bit of surface rust there. And that's pretty much it for this side. And then we've got all the coolant shenanigans on the other side. So, oh, and the gearbox, I, I, did I mention the gearbox? The gearbox is knackered. Yeah, the gearbox is knackered, but I have a plan. I have a plan. Don't fret on that. So, uh, yeah, there we go, right. Cheers for watching, I'm off. Thought you could smell something, didn't you?